Thank you for your uh, comments this morning. Really stimulating, exciting, and, and uh, you should be very proud of what the organization has done and where you're going. I want to shift gears a little bit okay. uh, in this. This is called COIL Perspectives. Uh, it's an opportunity for us to um, host our guests in uh, thinking about three questions. We like to pick a question and use it for a while, sometimes sure. as much as a year. And it gives us different perspectives, if you will, from um, our, our guests around a particular topic. So one of the issues that um, the World Campus is uh, challenged by, and this is not unique to the World Campus, it's online learning uh, largely, is around the issue of student retention. Mm -hmm. And um, retention means different things to different people, and, and uh, it also, that meaning then creates a different approach. And I'm wondering if you can share with us your perspective, and it may be the Open UKs, but your perspective sure. on what does retention mean to you? Well, retention is critical for us. I mean, we have to ensure, obviously, if someone is dropping off the course, then not only is that a failure on our part, but it's also a loss of revenue and those types of things. So we're focused not only on acquisition of students, obviously, but equally on retention is, is very, very important. And I think the way that we work as the OU, where we are putting a lot of free content out available for students or potential students to trial um, and actually see if they want to, uh, does distance learning work for them, does it suit them, is one way of mm pre-qualifying or certainly giving people a, a, a perspective on what uh, a paid-for module or a paid-for course would actually be like. Um, I think we also look a lot at areas like analytics and using analytics to proactively engage with the student. So for example, if a student's behavior within the, the learning environment uh, changes, if they haven't logged on in a particular week where there's standard pattern. Because we have uh, so much scale and so much history of previous uh, students, then we can predict when to positively intervene. So we will trigger uh, a mechanism, automatic mechanism, that triggers the online tutor to engage and say, hey, you know, we've noticed this, you're not really engaging at this time. Um, how do we help you? How do we help you through either difficult part of the course or maybe a, a, an external uh, element and allow for that. The aim being, if we can engage early and positively, then we keep the student on, sure. the, on the course. Um, I think from a wider perspective, it really comes back to how do we create in that whole distance learning piece? Because you know anyone who's learning remotely by laptop, uh, or, or mod, you know, uh, mobile, um, it can be very lonely, it can be quite isolating. So a lot of it is trying to replicate at distance or replicate online a, an engaging classroom experience. So a lot of tools around discussion groups, a lot of use of peer-to-peer -peer learning, a lot of use of the tutor um, generating additional subjects and topics to discuss so that people feel very much part of a group rather than someone just studying with us in isolation. And I guess the ultimate aim is really about how do you create that favorite teacher moment? How do you go back to when I was a student, what was the particular class or the particular course or the particular person that inspired me and why? And then taking some of those approaches into how we design courses from a longer you perspective. You know, yeah, I, I really like that framework because you're talking about creating a memorable teaching experience, moment, yeah. if mm -hmm. you will. Well, it's the whole experience, but what you're referring to, I think, is that teachable, I'm sorry, is that memorable moment. Like, oh, I remember when Mr. Smith did this. And Absolutely. Boy, that made a difference for me. Yep. And you're trying to capture that, the essence of that aha moment yeah. and, and uh, use that as a, as a tool to keep the student engaged and all. I think it's brilliant. Yeah, and I mean, the, you know, uh, your favorite teacher made the subject fun. Yeah. What they did by, you know, how they taught a particular subject, mm -hmm. how they used it, their own imagination mm -hmm. to bring that subject to life 
is what we're trying to do with our course structure. So, you know, as we were talking about earlier, uh, areas around storytelling and dramatization of, of making this more like a, a, just a more entertaining experience rather than just downloading facts yeah. and figures and yeah. things, really moving away from that. So um, I'm, I'm get, I have a lot of um, uh, subsequent questions that I'm sure. going to hold off on because we, we try to keep them. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, well, I love this line of conversation okay. though because it's um, to me it's uh, it's about personalization and that's what you're kind of describing. So the second question has to do with if you had all of the resources in the world, time and money, what would the environment look like that you would craft for a student to retain them in their educational experience? Oof. I mean, it's a difficult question. It's a big one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah possibly yeah. one we may not need to worry about too much. But I think really it's a question of, it, it touched on what you were saying. It's around personalized mm. learning. It's around encouraging people to uh, think of learning in a very positive way. And I don't mean just at a student level, but we do a lot of stuff with business. And we always have this situation whereby when... Uh, you go for a job interview and somebody offered you free gym membership and free training, then the traditional model is people just get more excited about free gym membership. And it's really about learning for the fun of learning. Um, so how do we create that? And I think some of it is using a wide variety mm. of tools and a very rich uh, production to produce that entertaining concept. Um, that is always going to be more expensive. It's always going to have those you know, aspects on it. But given that we always work under a budget, we see that as the goal sure. and then work according to the budget. Sure. But you know, you, you use the word tool, and, and I would think another mechanism is strategies. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I really uh, have enjoyed learning about in your model is the variation of teaching strategies that you're using that make it fun, the storytelling approach or the games that you've yeah. embedded. Um, all of these things add up to a, an exciting, to create an excitement about my learning. I sure. think that's really, that's terrific. Um, what would you, um, so if you don't have all the resources in the world, okay. and um, what advice would you have for someone uh, in taking the first step toward, like what would you focus on as a, as a next thing in the retention process? I think the key thing I would say is it comes down to learning outcomes. It comes down to, before you worry about how the course looks and feels, before you worry about the platform, is define what do you actually want people who experience the course to go through and what is the ultimate learning outcome from that. Once you can start doing that and define that piece, then you can build a course to achieve that goal. Um, I do think that a lot of people particularly within the corporate space um, where I'm engaged, is you find a lot of people focus uh, a lot of energy on the physical platform um, rather than on the actual content or delivery, the yeah. pedagogical sort of thread yeah. through that. Um, so I would say, you know, in the same way, and going back to the favorite teacher moment, what you don't remember is the actual classroom. You remember that teacher's yeah. Yeah. approach, and it's a similar thing. You're not you know, the platform, most platforms will do roughly what you want them to right. do. So don't worry about the platform. Think about the pedagogy. Mm -hmm. Think about the sort of thread of learning going mm -hmm. through it and relate that to achieving the learning outcome. So you can take this back for your boss, a supervisor, but you tell them you have completed your transformation <laughs> from the corporate <laughs> world. Because I think your questions are right. I'm sorry, your answers are so much in line with how we think about um, we can maybe get over focused on the gaming or the all of these other strategies and lose the essence. The very first thing you said is we have to focus around the outcomes. Yes, absolutely. I mean that's that's the goal. In the end, does the student achieve whatever we've defined as that objective? Mm -hmm. And um, uh, from the work I've seen that you presented, I think you folks are well on your way to building those kind of powerful systems. So thank you so thank much you. for sharing. It's thank been you. a pleasure. Appreciate that. And uh, and. Uh, Safe journeys back to the UK. Thanks very much. My pleasure.